History beckons. Who is listening hard enough to understand? According to Edmund Burke, those who don't know their history are destined to repeat it. It is a clear truth that Nigeria we know as the most populous black nation in the universe was built by youths in their 20s and 30s. Over the years, this same nation flourished and then went from bad to worse and further down the drain as it is becoming more complicated to even explain. Today, over 60% of our population is made up of young people who have all it takes to identify, deploy, and sustain solutions to emerging global problems, as well as to compete at the peak of any endeavor anywhere in the world. Unfortunately, they have been denied every opportunity to be and show the best God has blessed our country with. Isn't it rather sad that we boast of zero results despite the intimidating potentials, enormous resources, and abundant wealth that we are blessed with as a nation? Today, we prefer to celebrate our youths from the other side of the divide. How do we keep smiling face knowing that we import everything from toothpicks to even things we can source from our backyard? Anyways, History is filled with examples of individuals, groups, institutions, and nations around the world who have had to go through terrible experiences and situations that would have wiped their entire existence, yet had to find ways to stay above failure. More interesting is how they have deployed principles and proven strategies repeatedly to achieve remarkable success. I have been around enough to know that any success or result can be duplicated provided there is the willingness to learn and apply the same steps and strategies that brought about the result in the first place. Success leaves clues, and all proven principles of success are encoded in history and other people's results. But with all the recent happenings and events in Nigeria on a daily basis, one will begin to wonder why it has been a difficult task to learn from history. History gives us the opportunity to learn from past mistakes. It helps us to understand the many reasons why people may behave the way they do. As a result, it helps us to become more compassionate as people and more impartial as decision makers. I remember my first trip outside Nigeria. I couldn't wait to come back to share and practice most of the things that I greatly admired in those countries, like obeying traffic signals. But it was dashed because there has been no good road to even practice what I saw in those countries. I looked forward to bragging about the best schools and world-class hospitals being situated in Nigeria. But alas, those are dreams and fantasies I am yet to wake up from. Having been to a couple of countries, seeing how these countries are putting visible systems that directly affect the well-being of the citizens, it is obvious that Nigeria has a generation of leaders who are heartless and completely insensitive to the plight of the people. But again, you wonder who is really listening when the call of history is sounding so loud. You know, we, can, we must always say, this is our Nigeria. We don't want to give people a chance. You can imagine, I ran for a political position. Yeah, okay. I was about 40 at the time, 2019. They call me a young politician. When am I going to <laughs> and they going to start calling me an old politician? And you know, I see I see like fifty something year old saying we the youth. I watched something I, I watched something today and they were saying we the youth was asking for a presidential candidate and I looked at I, I said I know this guy now. I went to check his thing. He's like fifty six. And he oh said we the youth. Lord. So maybe he's thirty six. You know the way things used to change. Uh, you know, you know maybe it can be thirty six you know, at some point. Uh, I heard in Lagos State. <laughs> Yeah, 20 years automatically taken from Like you are 29 now. You yeah, know how you say you are 29 I, now. Yes, and everybody's adding nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so um, we refuse to pay attention to our history. Funny, I think there's a problem we have chosen not to face in Nigeria. Mm. And that is, we're actually not fighting the older generation. We are fighting our own generation, paid by the older generation. Mm. Mm. We're not fighting the older generation. Mm. That's the honest truth. So we're actually not fighting the older generation. If, if those people refuse to collect the peanuts that they are collecting, mm. because no, who is behind it? No, it's not peanuts. <laughs> it's, it's, buying, it's buying house in banana. <laughs> <laughs> it's not peanuts. <laughs> they are doing well. <laughs> they are doing well. <laughs> they are doing well. They Even are you, well. you cannot ask for the account number. <laughs> I know, because no, they are no, doing no. very well. They are doing very well. <laughs> they, are, they are doing very well. Yeah. So, so they, 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 they are the ones that turn against us. 
And that, that has always been the problem of the youth in Nigeria. Now, if you go back into the 30s and 40s, the youth had a united front. Mm. And they stood for an idea. Yeah. But now, to pull that, they'll say, go away, Joe, who is doing it? Which of you can do it? If a 40-year-old says he wants to be governor of Lagos State, I know what will happen now. His friends will laugh at him. That yeah. In short, let me tell you, go and sleep that mm -hmm. night. It's but uh, we are hoping, uh, Mr. Makoye, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you are popular now. <laughs> just smart I, want to, I, I, want, I want to <laughs> add, I want to add that, you see, uh, I made a video. I made a video, um, I think it was after the second, um, this thing, the one where police arrested me and when they um, beat me up and all. So I made a video. We saw about two to three, two to four youths, you know, talking, oh, the government is this, the government is that. And one of the politicians comes and then says, ah, he calls one of them. I says, they call me, I have one, um, 150 million that I'm not using, you know. And then he, 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 that one says no in front of everybody, says no. The politician throws the card on the floor, leaves. The guys, they say, no, 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 no. everybody left. End, end frame, he picks up the card. I didn't show what he was going to do with the card or not. There is a, there is a curse. It's a money curse. I call it a money curse. And uh, people are quick to sell their conscience. People they are quick to sell their conscience such that um, it, it now is very difficult. When some of us are saying, we just want, we just want everyone to have a level playing ground. Down. Which just, it's not, just, too, much it's not to too much to ask. It's not too much to it's, ask. I would not continue to wonder whether, why is there so much insecurity, so much unemployment, so much this. Is it that difficult for a country that is so blessed? blessed. It's not. But you find out that the youth are working against the youth. Mm. The youth are working in the, against the youth for the, the uh, I don't know what to call them, for those that have spent all of their lives. Those that spend their youth, their youth, exactly. To, you, you, to, know, to, you know what to. I even find most painful when you have programs um, or seminars that have been on or virtual seminars, and then they bring the people that have destroyed this country to come and teach us how to how develop to, how this to country. Exactly, I, 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 I don't sense. know who does. I see some people, <laughs> even and again, that's also where you find some religious spaces where uh, because somebody is now a, an acclaimed politician in quotes. Uh, and then they now invite him to now say he's a, he's a man of God. He's a man of God. He's a man of God. Because he can open Bible. That's what I was saying. He now come and open Bible and then now so pray and all the, those things. The atro atrocities that they commit in the name of God in this country, I'm sure God will be like, ah. It's, it's insane <laughs> because I know a particular, about a particular country in, in, in Africa where at some point they closed down 6,000 churches. Closed down 6,000 churches and focused on their ideology, on what makes them unique. They focused on it and while everybody in the world was like, the nonsense, antichrist, blah, 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 blah. Today, that country is one of the most developing countries in, in the continent. And they don't bloody care about you. So at that point, they could not set rules and guidelines. You want to do, you play your church, you want to do anything, you have to align to the guidelines that they have said. The other day, I was on Clubhouse and then somebody was giving an instance how uh, their house where they were living the, 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 there's a mosque in front and there is a, a, a church by the side. So at some point, the church guys came in later and then mounted very big speakers. Earlier on, the mosque were just doing it quietly inside where they were doing it. And they mounted very big speakers and it was facing the mosque. And then the mosque eventually got their own money, raised their own speaker, and it was facing them. Do you know... You, what noise pollution does in developed countries? Mm -hmm. Just play music mm -hmm. and increase the volume in your room. Mm -hmm. In your room, a police will come and give you a ticket. Mm -hmm. Come and give you a ticket for noise pollution. So I really think that this country a lot needs to you know get in place. Uh, religious sectors, all these people, young people also need to understand. That, that's, let me also point out that you see the NSAS is also one something that I learned something that is very remarkable. Since I was I, I'm, like I was born, that's the first time I saw young people unite together for the very first time. It never mattered where you are from. It never mattered what religion you were coming from. It never mattered your ethnic group. It's all only mattered about one thing, which is what Debo said: a level playing ground for everyone. Oh, and right now they are forgetting. They are forgetting because you cannot see most of these young people who are agitating. Let's go to war. Let's go to war. 
let's go to war. And these guys, most of the people who are saying let's go to war, don't really know what war is. I've always said this to, to people that, that always make the statement, or people that are within the sectors or being paid by, you know now, mm -hmm. those that are bankrolled. Mm -hmm. And I've always said this to them. I say, if you have 100 million and all your friends do not have money, you have less than 20 million because you help this one, help this one, help mm -hmm. this one. I said, but if all of us in Nigeria have 20 <laughs> million, nobody quid. needs to help anybody, you are fine. Quid. It's greed, basic human greed. greed. Uh, that and um, 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 all of these inadequacies, all this poverty, this unemployment, this lack of basic amenities uh, is because they are weapons as well. They are weapons used for the politicians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Used for the politicians to continue to, to, to control this fair. Look at now, there are some campaigns going on. With, we pro now, against 2023, already going on that will provide food <laughs> in, uh, in food. Why should, and what's the food? Palliatives from COVID. So, I mean, why should that be a topic of discourse now? Mm -hmm. That you will be providing food. So, you will provide food come that time. Why can't they have food now? now? What happened that they've not had food before now? So again, this is a very important issue. Um, it's only somebody who is alive oh, that will be alive know. to eat food in 2023. All right, guys. We thank you for your attention while the program lasted. We hope our conversation resonated with you. Little drops of water, they say, make a mighty ocean. Don't forget, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook at Plus TV Africa hashtag The Advocate NG and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with our previous broadcast, go to Plus TV Africa.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. See you next time. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.